With so many firearms available, choosing the best one for you can be overwhelming. This Gun Smarts video discusses features that can make all the difference in helping you decide. One of the most important features to consider when looking at a new handgun is the grip. From how big or how small, what kind of surface texture it has, how it's shaped, even the angle, it all matters. When you're handling a firearms grip, there's more to it than just how it feels in your hand. I see this all the time at dealers. A customer will handle the pistol with just one hand, holding it like the handle of a hammer. To really get an idea of how a grip feels, ask if you can aim at the wall or other designated safe place. Get a good two-handed grip on the gun because this is how you'll be using the pistol and it's the way you should test grip feel. The first and most important factor with grip is size. If the grip is too small or too large, it will make it harder to shoot. Now that's not to say you can't shoot a small or larger grip well, it's just gonna be more difficult than using a grip size that truly fits your hands. You'll have to make adjustments that aren't ideal for firearms that don't fit you. The most significant factor when choosing size is trigger reach. And you should be able to place the full pad of your trigger finger on the face of the trigger without having to adjust your grip. If you have larger hands and prefer to shoot with the first joint or more of your finger on the trigger, check to see if it's possible. Anything less than the center of the area in between the tip and the first joint will make it harder to apply consistent pressure on the trigger. Keep in mind that many firearms offer interchangeable grips. Changing out the back strap or grip panel can make all the difference in finding the ideal trigger reach. If you're looking at a firearm that offers different grip sizes than what's currently on the gun, ask if you can switch the grip to another size. Think of it like test driving a car. You should adjust the seat before you drive. Grip texture is another consideration and a personal one. From completely smooth to rough texture to even metal checkering like on this pistol, there's no right or wrong here. If you shoot a lot, you'll likely appreciate more aggressive texture because it helps you control recoil better. Your hands are used to that roughness and likely have some calluses too. If you have sensitive skin, plan to carry a pistol without an undershirt, or if you prefer a smooth grip for faster gun handling, you may want to look for a smoother option or one with very subtle texture. Not enough texture, there may be aftermarket grips, custom stippling, or tape that you can apply to the grip to increase that texture. Grip length is another consideration, and for magazine-fed handguns, it's often directly connected to capacity. So the longer the grip, the longer the mag, and the more ammunition it can store. Those with larger hands tend to appreciate a longer grip because it allows them to use all of their fingers for recoil control. In some case, a shorter grip frame can benefit from an extended magazine specifically designed as a grip extension. Keep in mind for concealed carry, the longer the grip, the harder it is to conceal. One last point for grip to address is grip angle. Different models and brands can offer different grip angles. Looking at it so that your slide is the baseline, you can see how much of an angle your grip has in relation to the slide. And there's no right or wrong here either, just a personal preference. Where it really matters is when you own firearms with two different grip angles. You may find that one seems to point low or high when you naturally aim. Dry firing safely without ammunition is a great way to refamiliarize yourself with a specific grip angle. Aside from grip angle, profile, and texture, there are other dimensions to consider when looking at firearms. Some pistols are blocky. They have sharp corners and flat surfaces where others are more rounded. Aside from the aesthetic of how they look, profile can make all the difference when it comes to comfort. Where this matters the most is concealed carry. Revolvers are well known to be among the most comfortable handguns to carry because of their curves. Other semi-autos, like striker-fired pistols, have more angles, and choosing the right holster and carry position matters even more when it comes to comfort. Weight is another factor in the feature equation. Generally, the heavier the gun, the less felt recoil. 
Smaller, lighter handguns are ideal for all-day carry, but that means they kick more, especially with self-defense loads compared to full-size pistols in the same caliber. Something to keep in mind when handling a firearm at the dealer, it's the unloaded weight here. The more capacity and loaded, the more the firearm will weigh for shooting and carrying. Now, shifting from pistols to long guns, one of the most significant features when selecting a rifle or a shotgun is the length of pull, the distance from the middle of the trigger to the end of the buttstock. A lot like grip, there's an average size or standard length that fits most people, but if you're outside of this average, it will be harder to mount the gun and line up on target. With stocks that are fixed, Custom work may be required for adjustments, but for modern sporting rifles, adjustable stocks allow you to adjust the length of pull quickly and easily. Barrel length is another factor that can affect your decision. For shotguns and rifles, longer barrels are typically preferred for target shooting, where shorter barrel options are handier for field and closer quarters. Balance is also an important consideration for shooting and carrying a rifle. A very long barrel can feel front heavy, a short one stock heavy. Having good balance can make all the difference for long days in the field. Now, a common misconception is that the longer the barrel, the more accurate the gun. Longer barrels aren't necessarily more accurate. The difference is in the shooter's perception. With iron sights, whether it's a rifle or a pistol, a longer barrel allows for longer sight radius. That's the distance between the front and the rear sight. The more sight radius, the easier it is to see the subtle differences in your sight picture, and that's what helps you shoot more accurately. When it comes to choosing sights, there are a number of options. Starting with iron sights, the most common are post and notch sights. And many pistols come with three dot white sights, allowing the user to line up the dots quickly. Fiber optic sights add some color to the sight picture and in the right lighting conditions, they really glow because they're so easy to see. These are preferred by users who have vision troubles and also competitive shooters for speed. Other iron sight variations include traditional all black sights, often cut with serrations to reduce glare. You'll see these used in accuracy-based competition where a precise sight picture is best. Another option, and like with fiber optics, a colored front sight, like this one, is very common. Or you may even see something with a gold bead combined with a black rear sight that makes that front sight pop and make it very easy to find quickly. Finally, night sights add tritium to either the front, the rear sight, or both. These sights glow in low light or dark conditions and are a top choice for home and self-defense. When it comes to iron sight mechanics, there are two options, fixed and adjustable sights. Fixed sights are pressed into place and though you can adjust them, it's a manual operation involving a hammer and a punch or a sight tool. Adjustable sights allow you to change the elevation and the windage quickly and easily with just a screwdriver. With their simple design and reliability, fixed sights are common on carry and defense firearms. Adjustable sights are more common in target shooting where the user may wish to make subtle changes for accuracy. Let's talk optics. Some firearms use optics as the sole sighting system, whereas others allow you to have irons and an optic sight, or even multiple optics on a gun. Talking optics can get very complicated quickly, so in this video, we'll give you a bird's eye view. Magnified optics are what most people imagine when they think of a rifle scope. It's a tubed optic that makes the target appear closer in order to be more precise. Now there are many types of reticles, that's the sighting system you look at through the scope, but most commonly is some form of crosshair. Reticles can be simple or extremely detailed to help the user make a successful shot at different distances. Now magnification on these optics can either be fixed or on many scopes, this is adjustable. You can change the magnification on the fly based on your target and the distance. This is really nice because lower magnification allows you a greater field of view, but when you identify the target, you can increase the magnification for the shot. The lower the power of the scope, the less magnification. So 10x magnification lets you zoom in more compared to 3x. Red dot optics are smaller and lighter optics common on many handguns, shotguns, and even rifles too. 
used for shorter distances and speed, red dots don't zoom in on the target like magnified optics. Red dots can be tubed optics with two lenses or they can use a single lens. Tubed optics are more common for long guns, although you may see them on handguns with a scope mount attached to the frame of the pistol. Single lens optics are small and light compared to the others, and they have a smaller mounting footprint, making them a top choice for pistol slides. Iron sights are simple and are considered more reliable, but there are big advantages to optics that make them desirable for many. Magnified optics make it easier to shoot distant targets accurately. Red dot optics eliminate the need to line up the front sight with the rear sight. Once zeroed, combined with good fundamentals, wherever the dot is on the target is where the bullet will impact. This makes them faster and easier to be more accurate. Now, many companies offer options for different sizes of red dots that you see when the dot is appearing on the target, and these are measured in MOAs, or minute of angle. The smaller the number of the MOA, the smaller the dot size. MOA matters based on what you plan to shoot. For precise shots on targets and target shooting, one to two MOA is preferred. For concealed carry, many like a larger dot, five to six MOA is popular. Many find that between two and four MOA, there's that happy medium and sweet spot for both speed and accuracy. For those interested in using a pistol with an optics, optics ready versions make it very easy to mount a red dot. Keep in mind that most of the time sights can be changed to suit your needs and target. If a firearm checks all of the boxes for you, but doesn't have the sights that you want, it may not be too difficult to change them out. It's also very important to consider whether you're able to access and manipulate a firearm's controls. A big one for pistols is slide manipulation. Inside the frame, you have the recoil spring, and depending on the pistol's design, this can be light or heavy. A heavier recoil spring means that you'll need more strength to rack the slide to the rear. Slide serrations can help a great deal, and there are techniques that can make slide manipulation easier. Keeping the muzzle in a safe direction, turning into the hand that helps you keep that muzzle down range and gives you more of a physical advantage. Then you just simply grasp the slide firmly with the support hand and punch forward with a strong hand. But it's not just a matter of switching out to a lighter recoil spring either. There are plenty of factors that come into play for functionality and changing to a lighter spring could result in malfunctions. That is not good. Those with hand and strength concerns will want to look for a firearm that's very easy to manipulate. A firearm's controls are features too. Being able to access and manipulate them is important. Starting with the slide stop or slide release, how easy it is to activate and deactivate with a strong side or support hand to drop the slide after a slide lock reload matters to many users. If you're left-handed, an ambidextrous safety will be very important to you and may be a deal breaker if it's not available. It all depends on the intended use. Being able to access a magazine button or cylinder release on a revolver is another consideration. Is the button within reach of your strong hand thumb? If not, will you need to adjust your grip to press it? And if so, how much? Is the button too small to find easily? Is it too large that you end up hitting it accidentally with your grip or when you place the gun on its side? Is the mag button ambidextrous or can it be changed out for a right side option? These questions may or may not be relevant depending on the gun and your needs. If a firearm has external safeties, you'll want to ensure that you manipulate these easily too. Whether it's a grip safety or thumb safety, make sure that you can both engage and disengage the safeties without issue and do so with your shooting hand. Like with other controls I've mentioned, ambidextrous safeties are extremely important for left-handed shooters or users who will shoot with a support hand only. Some features are built into firearms to help the user feel safer and more confident. A loaded chamber indicator makes it easy to see whether a round is in the chamber without having to manipulate the slide. A quick look is all it takes for that confirmation. When a gun owner can disassemble, reassemble, and maintain their firearm easily, that builds confidence and knowledge too. Easy takedown controls without the need to pull a trigger encourage safe, proper, and timely maintenance. Ease of use combined with strong materials and durable finishes shouldn't be overlooked as you explore your options. 
By knowing the main purpose, what you wish to use the firearm for, and writing down a list of critical features, you can narrow down your selection and make the best decision.